Hello humans, I'm the alien doctor, but you could call me alien, and welcome back to another video here on the Pinecraft Season 2 Survival Realm on Bedrock Edition. This is episode 9, and today we're going to be doing all sorts of things, but I think before we do that, we should go over what I did in between episodes. So I started off by getting Respiration 3 on my helmet so that I could breathe underwater. I then went treasure hunting and managed to get myself a heart of a sea, which I later crafted into a conduit, of course. As I returned through my portal, I then noticed there was a strange moss path leading into what looked to be a trap. And the trap actually had a cobblestone generator, which was meant to like basically trap me in there and then surrounded by obsidian. However, I mined the obsidian to get out and then mined all of the rest of the redstone components because honestly, I just need redstone components at this point. But then I continued working on the bit of the bunker that was going to be open to the sea. As well as that, I also changed up the design ever so slightly of the bunker by getting some sea lanterns. Previously, I was using torches under slabs. However, I was noticing the torch particles and I wanted to have something that was a little bit more consistent. So I ended up placing in sea lanterns in a ton of the corridors that we already had. And I extended the bunker even more than just that one room that was actually in the ocean, which was pretty cool. Because as you can see right here, we have actually got a whole lot of many, many rooms and corridors. So uh, I don't even think this small one was here last episode, but we've now got this other smaller one. Obviously, in the future, we could obviously connect it up with this one. However, we might as well just keep our AFK fish farm in here because, like, why not? And I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one. I might just add, like, I might just add something like a bigger version of this smoker or something just to kind of smelt down as much cooked cod as we can. Uh, you know, so that we can then sell it. And obviously, during all of this time, our dripstone farm has been, you know, working away farming. And uh, as you can see, we currently have 32 pointed dripstone, which is pretty good. And then this is the room I was talking about that actually leads out into the ocean, as you can see here. So, um, yeah, obviously, it's, it's really not finished, actually. But then we've got this absolutely massive room, which... Uh, apparently I haven't done that wall. I don't know why I didn't decorate that wall, but anyway, that wall is undecorated and obviously the ceiling isn't decorated either. That's because originally I was going to use this room for dripstone related things. However, I think I've actually changed my mind with that and we're going to end up doing something else. But anyway, and then we've got a very, 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 very long corridor, which leads to a stone and granite wall. And you may be wondering why this corridor is so long, and I'll tell you why it's so long. It's actually this long intentionally, so if we put ourselves a rocket in my offhand, then as you can see here, with this resource pack, we now have chunk borders. Now, is it this chunk or this chunk? I'm pretty sure it is this chunk that I am stood in right now that is actually a slime chunk. So what I'll do is I'll obviously bind this out, and uh, yeah, we'll have a little slime farm here producing us loads of slime but yeah anyway that's what we've got going on so far in this little bunker and there is actually another reason that i mined out that massively long corridor down there because if we head up here then obviously you'll know in that direction we've got the guardian farm and if you could kind of tell the sense of direction then that direction is where we mined out that massive corridor now i've intentionally basically mined away from the guardian farm reason being is we have had a couple of problems with portal linking what's been happening is portals at the guardian farm have been sending guardians through my base portal instead of through the kill chamber portal so my plan is actually to move the base portal like right at the end of that corridor so that it's even further away from the guardian farm now, obviously, that would mean this area would kind of become a little bit redundant because our main portal wouldn't be here. So we kind of have to move it over anyway. However, as you can see here, we've just got like kind of we're kind of starting to grow a little bit of a chest monster. So it's probably a good thing that we do move it out of the way and maybe add an area that has a nice sorting system and that sort of thing. Which brings me on to my next thing to talk about, which is this, I believe, because this is yeah, this is like an old thing from something else. I don't even know if I showed it in a video. I can't remember completely what it was for. But yeah, that's been, that's old news. <laughs> this is new. So, hey alien, I took 
Hashtag, basically what happens here is Minecraft Bedrock Edition censors words and it censored whatever words these were. However, the censoring thing is a little bit weird and chances are it wasn't actually a bad like word or anything. But yeah, it censored that for some reason. I'm going to actually assume that this was Perry and that he wanted gravel because I know Perry wanted gravel, but it could have been someone else. I don't know. But basically, they left me some diamonds, six diamonds. So whatever they took, chances are I don't need it uh, because there's six diamonds now here, which is actually very, very good. So we're going to add this to our profits. And as you can see here, we've nearly got a stack of diamonds, which is very, very cool. And then what is this mysterious book you may be wondering? Well, uh, let's just put it back on there. <laughs> the book's name is something nice. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, it's a, it's a Rick Roll basically, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> Rick Rolls are copyrighted, which is a shame. And is this all of the lyrics? I don't even know if this is all of the lyrics. Wait, no, this is. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. But yeah, basically we got Rick Rolled. Yeah. I think this was Floor. I have an, I, I'm pretty sure it was Floor. Just, this seems like something he would do. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't him. <laughs> Maybe I'm just bla blaming him randomly, but whatever. But anyway, moving on, let's actually do something in today's episode. And I think we should actually start off with the Farming Bunker to-do list. Because, you know, it kind of makes sense that we complete things from this to-do list because it's kind of what the list was designed for. Uh, so, let's just look at what we have already done. And the answer is actually none of these things. We haven't done any of these things. We've got a dripstone farm, but not a dripstone lava farm. Now, I was having a look at dripstone lava farms, and you actually can't make a fully AFK one. However, I have an idea for a semi-AFK one, which would involve you manually, like, collecting the lava and stuff, like when a redstone lamp turns on. So, to kind of show you what we I mean, I came into my testing world, and I'm actually using a really high random tick speed, which is why things might look a bit laggy. But anyway, we're basically going to have a farm where once the dripstone has filled up the cauldron, the comparator will then power this redstone lamp. We will then manually come around and collect it. So this isn't going to be an AFK able farm. I kind of just want it to work in the background so that every so often I could come and fill up my lava buckets as opposed to actually having an automatic farm. Unfortunately, we can't use dispensers and buckets to like dispense lava or anything out of cauldrons, which is a massive shame because I think that would be a really good thing. And yeah, just to show you, this is random tick speed of one and it will take quite a while for this to actually fill up all the way. But ultimately, I'm not really after like this massively efficient or quick way of doing things. We will have a decent amount of these. And yeah, just overall, I'm fine with a little manual system like this. Okay, here we go. So other than obviously the lava and dripstone stuff itself, I have built up like the redstone brains entirely of this farm. It is pretty simple. We couldn't have them next to each other, like redstone lamps next to each other, because as you can see, redstone does not redirect into a lamp. And uh, we could use like target blocks or pistons or whatever to redirect the redstone, but then it just starts to get a lot more effort, a lot more complicated. This will probably be enough. I also had to shrink the room a little bit because, uh, yeah, I had to fit the redstone in for this side. I haven't obviously made any on this wall, but I don't really see a point in doing so. Like, we've not got a ton of space. I guess we could seal off this, like, wall or something, or even that one. But yeah, I feel like it's fine how it is. I like it how it is. I don't think we need to change it. So, obviously, all we need to do now is actually, well, I guess, get some of the base lava to put above here, and obviously the dripstone stuff. So, let's actually place in the dripstone first because that just seems to make sense to me so here we go i've now added in all the lava up at the top if we just head up here you'll be able to see it there we go so obviously i already had like a ton of lava buckets anyway because i keep going and collecting them for smelting down all of the cooked cod for my shop which we'll check in a bit so yeah and that's actually what this is for i'm going to be using this lava for actually you know smelting down all of the various stuff and things that we need to smelt down i think though what we should do is get like a chest in there or something that just has an absolute ton of buckets i think that would just kind of make sense because obviously uh, yeah that's kind of the entire point of that place 
Also, yeah, I added in this, like, water source in the middle. I kind of... Wait, it's sort of in the middle. It's not really in the middle, is it? Well, I kind of just wanted to add something, like, somewhere and near the middle, just to kind of almost give it a bit of a center. And obviously, like, water... It's kind of like the lava and the water room, if that makes sense. So, I don't know. It just... It felt like the right thing to do. And yeah, there we go. So, here's our chest that will have lava and spare buckets in. And, uh, yeah, obviously, when this lava fills up, the redstone lamp will turn on. But that'll take a while. But luckily, we spent a lot of time in this area. Hello, Drowned. <laughs> hey, Drowned gave us copper. So, I just popped over here into the shopping district real quickly. Because Aliens Fish Shop is obviously a thing that still exists. And I want to see... Uh, well, firstly, if it's run out of stock and if we've made any profits. So let's see. Okay, good news is we've not run out of stock. However, we have made a diamond. I also brought more stock with me so that we can then go ahead and actually restock up this shop. So I'm going to do that real quickly. Okay, there we go. So the shop has been stocked uh, with as much fish as I can stock it with. And uh, we'll just add that. And oh, nice. This is actually our... 64th diamond so that marks our first stack of diamonds on the server which is very very nice indeed and at some point we should probably pay froggy back for that loan we got on the botarari thingy however i yeah, we will probably be fine because anyway i've got other things that i want to do <laughs> so starting off with this thing this is a like a quest thingy so basically the idea is is that you complete quests and for your team and uh, the redstone and lamps fill up now i have i was basically unable to be online at the time when the teams were decided however i know skull has made a video on it and um toad and penate might also make a video on it as well and perry and other people that were there but yeah i'll link skull's video in the description if you want to go ahead and watch that so basically what this game is is you have four different teams so skull cam and me penape floor and stan perry and froggy hypno toad and zb and the idea is is that if we head over here to this uh, very nice house i must say then you've got a ton of different categories for a ton of different quests so interactive slash pranks fetch quests random quests and building quests and the idea is is that your team can do one of these once a minecraft day so there are daylight sensors in here to stop you from you know doing that more than once uh, and sleeping does not count if i am correct i don't think you can sleep to skip the day but anyway once you then do that quest you'll come over here and press that button and i believe you put your completed quests in the chest maybe yeah there's a hopper under there so you put your completed quests in the chest or something i don't know we'll figure that part out later but yeah i haven't done any quests at all so either skull or cam has actually done all of these quests and if we head over here hypno toad and zb uh, you know, have also done a lot of quests and it would be pretty nice if we could beat them. So we've only got three more quests to do. So I reckon we can do maybe two of them, at least one of them in this episode anyway, and then maybe I'll just do one outside of episodes or something. So these are also quests that you can discard and I don't think I can do anything with these, which is a shame. It'd be cool if we could like, you know, use, do other people's quests that have been discarded. But anyway, um, random quests is probably the first one that we'll do just because like, I don't know, it's a bit of random stuff. But anyway, let's press the button. And in here, here is our quest. Form a secret society. Okay, that, that, that's actually going to be a little bit hard. So I think we're just going to put this in here because I don't think I can do more than one quest at the same time. And, uh, well, I want to do some quests. So, uh, and we can't do this because no one else is online. And, um, yeah, because of time zones, that'll be hard to arrange. We've not really got time. So we're not going to do a random quest. Now, I don't think it matters if we actually choose one from a different category. I don't think we have to wait a day for that. Uh, so what else is there? There's interactive slash pranks. Let's do one of these. Be over friendly streamer for day. That's easy because no one else is online. Why did I just type? I just like that's just something I naturally do. Type test into chat. I don't know. That was weird. Anyway, <laughs> so have I just got to be like an over friendly streamer for a Minecraft day? Because like I could very easily do that. Just like walk around here just being friendly to people because there's no one else online. It's like I could be friendly. I could be friendly to this Ravager, for example. 
So uh, if I'm being an over-friendly streamer, I just had a genius idea. Because there's no one else online to do this with. So anyway, we've got this with this Ravager over here. We need to do this quest, obviously. So how about I just be really nice and give you some Pogchamp gravel. How nice of me. What a streamer. What a nice streamer, honestly. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. For you, Mr. Unnamed Ravager, I've got you some Omega Lol gravel. How nice of me. Oh my goodness. I am so, so nice. Aha, here you are, Bonocchi, Bonocchi. I don't know how to say your name, but uh, I'm, I'm being a nice, I'm being a nice streamer for a day. And uh, I thought, well, I, I thought I'd be nice to you. So uh, have some Kappa Granite. There you go. I, I know, it's going to make your day. Anyway, see you. I hope you get loads of sales. Bye. Actually, do I hope you get loads of sales? Because... I keep finding these boat Ferraris down my tunnel and I can't rent about it because I'm a nice streamer so I totally don't mind at all that people are leaving these things in my tunnels. Not at all. Nope. Uh-huh. I'm a nice streamer. Omega lol. Aha. Uh -huh. The bathwater shop. This can be the next place where I can leave a present. Uh, we've got some Twitch Prime Mycelium right here and uh, I believe this is where they make the bathwater live, isn't it? Yeah. Watch the process. Okay. So uh, let's just give... Yeah, let's just give Floor some uh, some Twitch Prime in there, and uh, let's, let's do this properly. There we go. So now Floor, when when he comes back here to make his bath water, he's gonna have some uh, some Twitch Prime mycelium in there. A lovely, nice little present for him from me, the nice streamer. Hello there, random creeper building shop thing. Is this? The, I don't even know what this is, honestly. But hello there. Um, I, I've got you some uh, bits. Obviously, bits are the currency over on Twitch. Here's a uh, hundred bits. There you go. Uh, yeah, don't spend them all at once. Bye. And with that, we have done a day of being a nice streamer. I can now be a not nice streamer and do not nice things. Anyway, <laughs> that was actually easy because uh, no one else actually came online. But anyway, and before we do that, we actually need to get ourselves the actual, uh, you know, thingy quest and put it in our thing. So this is as it just gets taken. Do we press the button? I heard a thing happen. Is that? Yes. Okay, so we just need to do two more quests now. And then we'll uh, have one, I guess. So there's building quests. Right. Let's just get take another random quest, because why not? Lead someone on a compass trail. Well, this is going to be a little bit hard, because there's no one on here to lead on right now. However, I do have an idea of something that I could do with this. So I've headed over here into Toad's gamers kind of base area because obviously no one else is online and because of time zones it's kind of going to be quite hard to arrange that and it seems like everyone's quite busy at the moment anyway which is yeah why no one's online right now but anyway my plan is to make a compass trail i i'm gonna be honest i don't fully know what a compass trail actually is however i've kind of got a little bit of a guess so i guess we'll just uh, do that and this is kind of a prank as well so what i'm gonna do is craft up into planks a ton of these logs that i just mined and then we're actually gonna craft like a ton of them into signs there we go that should probably be enough and on this sign, we're just going to have something that says go to these coordinates and uh, yeah, we'll carry on going to each set of coordinates if that makes sense until eventually Toad will have a prize at the end. That's what I'm guessing a compass trail is. I don't know. I've not really got enough time to ask. I kind of want our team to win. I don't even know what the prize is, but I still want to win. Uh, we need to leave this where someone will see it or where Toad will see it to be specific. Let's just put it... Hmm. Actually, we could probably do with a lectern. Okay, so here we are. Here's a book and quill. So now it's time to do some typing. So what we've got is Toad. Go to the coordinate zero zero. You'll find more info there. Alien. P.S. This is definitely not something for the quest event. Wink face. And uh, we'll just enter book title. We're just going to say hello, Toad. And we're going to say bye, Alun. You gotta really overpronounce the U. <laughs> oh yeah, and then place down this lectern right here, and then we're just gonna place signs to Toad from Alien, and then we'll just place signs on all sides because why not? We need to make it obvious, okay? And then if I got torches, yes, I have, okay. Because I'm worried that he's not going to notice it. <laughs> so this way, if I add like a ton of torches and stuff, this way he might notice it. Okay, there we go. So we've got a little arrow there as well. And this, will this stupid skeleton go away? So I've popped over here to zero, zero, and I've just put this sign that says four toad. No one else 
move please and then go to 1000 1000 this is basically yeah you get the idea so what's going to happen is there'll be a ton of different signs that each tell you to go to a bunch of different coordinates now eventually there will be an end i'm not just going to loop it around there will be an end for toad to go to and i'm going to skip to the end because we don't really need to see me placing in all these signs because uh, yeah that's kind of just going to be a bit boring so the final set of coordinates actually lead you to here or will lead toad to here and we're just going to have a sign because the actual exact coordinates are here. So we're just going to say turn around and Toad will turn around and he's going to see this. So this is what Skull uh, built me like a while back. And uh, yeah, basically, I'm just going to get him to do this. So uh, Toad, do this for a prize. And yeah, at the end, we'll obviously leave him something. So it's just some pretty simple parkour. Now, I want to do up this room. So um, yeah, that's my plan is actually to kind of decorate this place a little bit. And then as you can see here, we've got this like lava thing, which I definitely do not want to have to make my own version of. And uh, we're just going to figure out a way to go around. And aha, uh -huh. okay, so it looks like that Skull already has a tunnel built. And then this combination lock. Now, looking at the redstone back here, this is a much more of an overcomplicated combination lock than what I would normally do. So we're going to remove quite a lot of this stuff and make a much more simpler combination lock. And then obviously, once he's done that, uh, okay, hopefully that block doesn't matter. There'll be like a prize in here, which will just be a couple of diamonds or something. So anyway, I'm going to get on to doing that now. Out of all of these, the only room that we're actually not modifying is the lava room reason being is that's kind of just that sounds dangerous and like a lot of work and uh, yeah i don't really think we need to modify this thing but anyway i'm gonna get to doing a bit of decoration a bit of doing this place up and uh, yeah i'll get back once i've done that so i have fully finished redecorating the puzzle room that skull made me i think he originally made this in like episode i don't even know what episode it was but anyway so what i have done is i've completely changed the uh circuit for the uh, combination lock so it's actually a much more simpler design now and then obviously we'll have an iron door here and i'll place that in when i leave because in this room i just wanted to place in the actual final prize which is going to be a collection of some of the stuff i have in my inventory right now so we're just going to do this and then this and then add the gold in here and then the little diamond block on top and then this is going to be toad's prize and then we've just got a simple little bubble elevator that will lead him out. So I'll just like go ahead, patch up these holes, and then I'll show you this entire place and what we've done to it. So the actual coordinates themselves tell him to go to this block. So obviously we are a block over. However, if we fall down, we've then got this sign. This is actually where he's meant to be. And this is a sign that says turn around. Once you turn around, it says put all your stuff here. Come back after you escape. He's then going to have some parkour that he can do. And obviously we've got stairs so that if you fall off like I just did then, then, uh, you know, you could climb up the stairs. Now, the other thing to point out is obviously other than decorating this room, I actually completely changed the parkour to make it a little bit harder and then once he's done that he's gonna have this lava thing i haven't actually changed this since what skull made it and he's just got to walk around here you know trying to find uh, the exit but then if we come through this secret tunnel this leads us to the combination lock room where this iron door will be like that and then obviously this is his reward so there we go i would say we have successfully completed this quest now which is good news. It's now been the next day IRL, and that means we're back here on Pinecraft. However, I have just been told some uh, <laughs> some news. So it actually turns out that uh, four days ago, Toad won. I mean, I never saw that in any of the Discord messages. I never saw that they said the quest event was ended. But uh, yeah, apparently Toad won, despite the fact that there's been a few more quests that have been redone. And then apparently we've also... Yeah, we've also uh, actually filled up our bar. But apparently this team, Toad's team, won before us. So, um, yeah, that happened. <laughs> and I didn't realise, but that's fine. Basically, the every almost everything I did this episode has been pointless. But I don't really care. I enjoyed doing it. That is probably going to be it for this episode. So we, uh, <laughs> we have done a decent amount of stuff. However... None of it's really that useful because it turns out the quest event is over, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Obviously, we have uh, obviously done something, which is the dripstone lava farm. So we can get rid of that now. And uh, yeah, anyway, we'll do this other stuff. Maybe next episode, maybe not. Who knows? But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe today to join the Alien Empire. I'll see you in the next video coming soon. Bye.